Leaf propagation is the very easy process of multiplying some of your favorite plants using the cells within a leaf structure. And now on begonias, we're gonna encourage those leaf cells to start growing roots. And the roots combined with the existing leaf material will photosynthesize and encourage new leaves and stems to form. And in time, not that long at all, we will have an exact clone of our favorite plant. And this is such a fun process. It's one of my favorite ways to propagate plants, especially begonias. So let me share with you the steps I take to grow new begonias from leaf cuttings. Step one in propagating begonias from leaf cuttings is to select a healthy young leaf that is fully grown. We don't want any nasties or insects or disease because that's going to carry through to our propagated young plants. So make sure you select a healthy leaf. Now the best time of year to do this is in spring and early summer because it's going to be lush, healthy, young material. You can do it late in the season. Um, I do a lot of begonia propagation in autumn, but just make sure that you're using the younger leaves that have this lovely fresh foliage. So as with any propagation, we're gonna reduce the surface area of the leaf. Now, the reason we do this is to reduce a process called transpiration, which is the leaf losing water through evaporation of the surface of the leaf, and that's just gonna help retain moisture in that cutting material to prevent it drying out and dying before it has a chance to grow roots. The amazing thing about propagating begonias from leaf cuttings is that we can even use that section of leaf that we've cut away to grow multiple new plants. Now, the section that has the petiole on, that's the leaf stem, I find generates new plants really reliably. The other section can root at every single vein in the leaf. You can get roots form and a new plant form at every single vein. So each leaf technically could generate between five and 10 plants, even more. Now you will notice that I'm not using compost in this seed tray when I'm propagating plants from leaf cuttings. I'm just using straight vermiculite. Now vermiculite has really, really good water retaining properties, but it also allows air pockets, which is the perfect environment for leaf cuttings to grow new roots. Vermiculite is a very common product and it's available at all garden centers and you can buy it online. I'll put a link in the description. So with your leaves chopped into sections, and I like to do it this way, where there's the section with the leaf stem on, and then the other section I just curl up and press into the vermiculite. I press it down to a depth of about a centimeter with the green side of the leaf, the top side of the leaf facing upward because that green side is still gonna photosynthesize. It's still gonna feed the leaf cutting. Now, if you want to increase the number of potential plants that each leaf is gonna grow, you can just cut across the leaf veins like I'm doing here. This will open up the vein and create another opportunity for roots to form. And every section of the leaf that generates roots could potentially be another new plant. Now you can fit quite a lot of leaf material into a seed tray when you're doing leaf cuttings like this. The trick is just to make sure there's enough air gaps between each section of leaf without them leaning onto or touching each other that much. Now to help us improve the success rate of this propagation, as with so many other forms of propagation, is to ensure that our leaf cuttings are in a high humidity environment. Now we can do this by placing a lid over our seed tray and these lids are perfectly fitted to these quarter sized seed trays and it's just going to prevent water evaporating away and it's going to keep all of that humidity there which is the perfect environment for leaf cuttings or even stem cuttings to root and propagate but if you don't have a lid for a seed tray you can just use a clear food bag um, you can put the tray inside of it or you can just place it over the top of the tray and it's going to act exactly the same way it's just going to capture all of that water in that seed tray and it's just gonna prevent the cutting material from drying out before it's had a chance to set down roots so that it can uptake its own water. Now that we've taken leaf cuttings from our begonia plants, it's time to put this seed tray somewhere bright, but not in direct sunlight. Now bright light is gonna really help the existing chlorophyll in the green leaves photosynthesize and that's gonna feed the new growth of roots and stems and new leaves. 
and we're going to want to put it somewhere warm because warmth acts as a catalyst and encourages the cells to divide, which encourages root formation. Now, I'd aim for something around 20 degrees Celsius. I think that's about 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is the sweet spot for leaf propagation. It's not so hot that the tray is going to dry out, but it's warm enough to encourage the roots to form. Now, when you first water your leaf cuttings, you can do it quite thoroughly because you want to saturate all of that vermiculite and to create a really humid environment for the leaf cuttings. Cover them over and that's going to reduce the amount of times that you're going to need to water, but I would check on them periodically, at least every two or three days, just to check that they're not drying out. And if they are drying out, just give them another watering. If during the propagation process you do see any signs of rot, remove that material straight away because that rot's just going to spread from one section of leaf cutting to another and we don't want that to happen. Just take the rotting material away and throw it away or put it onto the compost and keep all of the fresh healthy material in your seed tray. And in about four to six weeks you're going to see roots forming and once the roots have formed stems and new leaves will form. And when you see this, it's the time to lift the cover off of your seed tray and allow these new young plants to grow. Now I find that begonias benefit from having a really well drained potting mix because they've got such delicate roots, they are liable to root rot. So get a well drained mix and your begonias will grow away perfectly and then you'll have more around your home and garden and you can share them with friends and family. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button. It is the easiest way to support this channel. And if you want to share ideas or pictures of your begonias, create a free account on our growers forum, growparadise.social, where people are sharing pictures of their plants and gardens from all around the world. It's a fantastic community. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.